Hey, what's up, family? And happy Thursday to you all. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, so today's video is going to be short. I watched a Bible study from a man named Alan Parr, and he did an overview on Job, Job's life. I'm going to put that link in the description box. Please check that out. It's about 35 minutes. He walks you through the entire book of Job. So I do want to just highlight seven things that he mentioned that we can learn from Job's story. So for many of you, you're familiar with Job. Job was God's right hand man, right? God was like, I checked him. He's strong. I ain't worried about him. And Job loses everything, everything, everything. So I want to highlight seven things that we can learn from this. And again, this comes from Alan Parr. So number one. Living a good life or a righteous life does not protect us from pain. So just because you're a good person, people would tell me that all the time. Like, Stacey, you're so nice. Um, when we were growing up, my sister and I, they were like, you guys are such good kids. And it's and it's cool. You know, it's like we need more good people in the world. Like, don't get me wrong on that. But being good does not protect you from trials, from tribulations, from challenges. Being good don't get you into heaven. Being good is not enough. And we see that. Job was a good guy. Look what happened to him, right? He's not exempt. So God owes us, and I have my notes over here. God owes us nothing. Absolutely nothing for being good. Number two, we can worship God in the midst of our pain. We can, we should, we must worship God in them. And I know that's hard. Look, I know for sure. I've had some good days. I've had some bad days. And not just recently, like just life. Life hits all of us, right? We have ups, we have downs. Worship God in the midst of it every day. And your worship is going to look different. One day you might be jumping around, singing, dancing, sweating, whatever it is. Another day you might literally be laying in the bed. Maybe you're worshiping because you got worship music on or you're reading a verse or you're just talking to God. Worship's going to look different every day, but worship him. Number three, be present with people when they are experiencing pain. So what we see in Job's life is that he has friends, he has family members, he has all this going for himself. And then when he when when life really starts lifing and it hits him. There are people who are around him who are present with him in the midst of all of that. So I know oftentimes, and I'm one of these people too, I'm not going to lie. I, I want to help people. Like if they're going through something, I want to help them. I want to figure it out. Right. And I've had a lot of people who will text me, call me, ask me questions about, you know, what are the symptoms and, you know, what did you do in December and what led up to this and asking a lot of questions. And I know that they have good intentions behind it. But honestly, it doesn't help me to replay that. The same thing when you lose a loved one. I lost my sister in July. And I know people have good intentions. But around that time, there would be questions like, well, what kind of cancer was it? And what happened? And where was she at? And what are the doctors? Think? And I know, again, that they care. I get that. But it would trigger me every single time to have to relive that experience again and again. So I love what it says here. It says, be present with people when they're experiencing pain. Key word, just be present. Sit down with them. Just sit at their, in their house. Take a walk with them. If they're going somewhere, keep them company. Join them. Sometimes that is all people need when they are in the midst of something. They don't necessarily need you to try and figure it out. And I say that with love, with gratitude, and with respect. Number four, God can handle our anger. God is big. God can handle our grief. God can handle our pain. He knows it. Don't be scared to be angry. Job was angry. Go back and read Job. Job was angry. He was upset. He lost 10 kids. He lost his house. He lost his, his wife. I mean, he didn't lose his wife, but his wife got sick. She ended up leaving. So yeah, technically he did. He loses and then his health on top of that. He loses a lot and he's upset. He's angry. He's disappointed. He's questioning God. Now, don't question God. We're going to get to that part. But 
You are a human being. You are going to have emotions. God knows it. He understands it. You, if you have it on the inside and you're not expressing it, God still knows. You can be angry and not say nothing. It's still anger. So God can handle it. Just know that. The next point. Our friends and family members or people that we love that we love are revealed in our darkest moments. So when you're going, think about something that you went through that was really tough. Maybe like, you know, just whatever it was. Think about it. Who was around? Who stayed in your corner? Who had your back? Right? Who spoke on your behalf when other people were speaking ill against you? Who came to help you out when you were in need? Who checked on you? Who, 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 who was around? Look around and reflect on that because the people who love you the most and care about you the most, they will be revealed in those moments. And the people that don't will also be revealed in those moments. I think it was um, Denzel Washington. It might have been, might have been somebody else who said, circumstances don't make a man. They reveal him. These circumstances are going to show you who people are. And what I love is that the circumstances also show you who you are in it. That circumstance is going to reveal you for your true self, not who you thought you was or who you've been pretending to be, but who you actually are. And sometimes you're not going to like it. There were parts of me that, that have been revealed and I, and I don't like it. But that's where God steps in, where I say, OK, God, I appreciate the opportunity to 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 see myself, but help me change. That's what God wants at the end of the day. Change me. Oh, look up that song, Tamala, man. I got to listen to that today. That one brings tears to my eyes every time. Change me, oh God. Make me more like you. Ooh. Change me. Wash me through and through. Just create in me a new or a clean heart. Something she said. Yeah. Create in me a clean heart. Okay. Let me get back to this. Look that up. Tamala Man. Live. The live version. My God. Where was I at? Okay. Number six. We almost done. It's a short one. God's plans are not always something we can see or figure out. I love Olivia Pope just like the next person. I'd love to be able to fix it and figure it out. That's my problem. God's working on me with that because I was okay with things that I could control. I mean, I guess everybody is. But once something got out of my control that I couldn't figure out, I couldn't change, doctors couldn't change nobody, oh, <laughs> it became a problem for me. And I recognize that. So I recognize my limitations and um, how my relationship with God needed to change. So let so I will just say that I recognize that. But we're not always going to be able to figure it out. And there's a reason why, because if we could figure everything out, why would we need God? If we could understand everything, why would we need God? If we could solve every problem and change the things we needed to be changed, we wouldn't need God. So God is not even going to allow that. So we're not always going to. Now, some things he might allow us to figure out, but not all things. And then the last thing here is number seven. We may not ever. So, so Job continued to ask God, why? Why me? Why are you doing this to me, God? I've been nothing but good. I have served you. I have brought people to God. I have taken care of my family. I have been noble. I have been honest. I've been trustworthy. I've been obedient. God, why are you doing this to me? I don't deserve it. Why, God? So Job asked this question. I remember when I was growing up, my dad used to always tell us, like, never, ever, never question God. Never ask God why. And we see in the Bible that Job does. He's human. So if you have asked God that, just ask God to forgive you. You're human. He knows your heart. But try not to question God. Um, what I, I, I appreciate about this, too, is that sometimes we get the answer to why God does things and it's revealed to us. And sometimes we don't. 
Sometimes we don't get that answer from God himself. We might get that answer through other people, through other experiences, through some revelations, through some insight and awareness and an epiphany that happens. And then sometimes we don't get that answer. And when we don't get that answer, because I've been in those moments where I'm just like, God, you didn't went radio silent. Like, if I just quiet myself enough, maybe I can hear you, God. Come on, God. Let me tune in like a radio to your frequency. Am I off? I'm on 88. You on 92? What's up? I wanted to hear God. Nothing. So it's in those moments where I say, okay, God, I'm not hearing from you. Okay. Help me to accept that. Help me to accept the silence. Help me to accept what you're not telling me and what you're not revealing to me. Help me to trust that part right there and you take whatever it is that you why in God about and you put it in a little package and you lay that at the altar and you give that to God you surrender it and you let it go and you accept it so I pray that this information blesses you no matter what you're going through you see my shirt don't stop don't quit don't Give up, worship God, praise God in the midst of whatever it is that you're going through. Celebrate it. Celebrate that victory right now. Trust in God and believe that he can do it. He can turn it around. He can change it. He absolutely can. There is nothing that God cannot do. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. And maybe that's what you have to continue to tell yourself. When that doubt sets in and that enemy sets in, you ain't got to be mad about the enemy. Just, just change your language, change your thoughts. Like there's nothing that God can't do. He has no limits. Oh, like Master P. Okay, no limit. I think I'm gonna go on that note. So have a wonderful day. God bless you all, and please like, share, and subscribe.